Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com. Welcome to Mastering On One Photo Raw 2018. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the adjustable gradient tool that's found in On One Photo Raw 2018. The adjustable gradient tool is one of two local adjustment tools found in the program. If we look over at the far left hand tool panel, you'll see it says local and directly above it is the adjustable gradient tool. And when you're ready to use it, simply click on the tool to activate it. You'll notice in the far right hand panel that we switched from overall settings to local adjustments and it added an adjustable gradient layer. And in that layer, you'll notice that exposure by default will be turned down to minus one. That's to help you see where you're applying the gradient. You always could go back and readjust that after you applied the gradient. Now, to apply the gradient, you'll notice that your cursor has turned into what on one calls the adjustable gradient bug. And for those of you that are used to applying adjustable gradients in Lightroom, the adjustable gradient in on one works slightly differently. Those of you with or are familiar with that um, Lightroom gradient know that you could go towards the top of the screen, click with your left mouse button and drag the gradient down. And as you drag it down, you're actually widening the transition zone between the darkest part of the gradient and the lightest part of the gradient. On one's gradient doesn't work that way. You could try doing it. Go up to the top of the screen, click with the left mouse button and drag down. But you'll notice you're really not widening the transition zone at all. You're really just repositioning the gradient. You're moving the entire overlay down. You're not really widening this transition area. Furthermore, with Lightroom's adjustable gradient, you could go up to say a corner and drag in diagonally to put the gradient in crooked. And it doesn't work that way here. You'll notice as I'm going diagonally, it's just putting a horizontal gradient in the image. Finally, with Lightroom's gradient, you could click towards the bottom and drag up from the bottom, and it will put the gradient in and upside down. This gradient, again, doesn't work that way. It's just putting in a normal horizontal gradient with the stronger part of the gradient being towards the top and it transitions through to the bottom where it's not applied at all. So with on one's gradient to apply it to your image simply click on your image. You could drag again if you want but it's not doing anything. So once you clicked on the image it applies the overlay. Now you could manipulate it to any position you want. I could grab this center circle and pull it down to the horizon line. That's where I'd like it. If I needed to rotate it, I could grab this smaller circle and rotate the gradient around that way. If I rotated it and I want to get it back straight again, hold the shift key in and then it will automatically snap to horizontal. If I wanted to get it specifically in a, in a corner, I could move the whole gradient up there and spin it around. Another way is to just move this entire assembly of two circles, let's say in this case to the far right, then grab that smaller circle and twist it and we get it up in that corner. So there's a lot of different ways you could manipulate this gradient. Now if you wanted the gradient upside down, you could just grab the small circle and flip it all the way upside down that, like that. But there are other ways to handle an upside down gradient. I'll talk about that in a second. Because first I'd like to mention the transition zone. If you'd like to change the transition zone, just go up and hover over any of the two dotted horizontal lines. And when you do that, you'll notice that your cursor turns into a vertical arrow. Click down and then just drag up or down and you'll be widening or narrowing that transition zone. So for this case, I think I'd like a narrow transition zone and I'd like the gradient pretty much on the horizon right there. So that's how you would manipulate the gradient once it's applied. But I mentioned that 
you could have an upside down gradient. You could spin it, but there is another way. And if we go up here to the top presets, you'll see right now it says none, but that's because I moved everything around and I was messing around with the gradient. You, usually when you apply the gradient, it will be a linear top gradient like this. And you could just move it, and you could see it says linear top. Then as soon as you start changing your gradient around, it will say preset none. But there are other types of gradient. We could have a vignette. We could have a strong vignette. We could have then this linear top that we talked about. Or if you want that upside down gradient, you do a linear bottom. And now the, the gradient is upside down. So you could spin it, or you could just go up to the preset and do linear bottom. You could do linear left, and finally linear right. Now, again, for this image, I think linear top is the one I want, but I want to manipulate it so it's down here at the horizon line. Furthermore, the shape of the gradient, and actually I shouldn't have did that because this will change everything again. Center, edges, the actual gradient, which is what I want, or a reflected gradient. A reflected gradient, you could see, has extra lines. And let's pick on that one just for a second. This basically is the middle. Like, all your gradients is strongest in the middle, then transitions to no gradient as it goes to either dotted line. So basically, your gradient is in the center. And there are times, and they call that reflected, and there are times you may want to utilize a reflected gradient. But again, for this image, I just want a normal, everyday gradient right there. Then the opacity of the gradient, uh, you could click on that little drop down and use this slider to adjust the opacity. Or, as I demonstrated in a previous video, you could just hover over the word opacity and your cursor turns into what is called a scrubby slider. And then you could just click down and drag left or right to adjust the opacity. Now, to the right, we could add another gradient. I'm not going to click on it only because it's kind of a pain in the neck when you add it. When you do add another gradient, you're not adding another layer. You're adding another gradient to the same layer. And they seem to work off each other, and they don't always work the way you want it. For example, on this image, I would prefer to have a gradient that affects the sky one way than a different gradient that affects the water a different way. If I click add a gradient, then take the second one and flip it upside down and do adjustments, it seems to negate the adjustments of the previous gradient instead of being overlaid on top of the adjustments. So, uh, in my opinion, you could experiment with add gradient, but you're much better off, uh, when you want a second gradient, you're much better off adding another layer. And we're going to do that in a minute. But for now, let's adjust this gradient so it's pleasing to this picture. I'm going to reset it as far as exposure. I don't want it to adjust exposure for this image. But you'll notice across the top, as is the um, norm with these on one adjustment panels, we have a number of preset styles. And we start out with lighten. And these are similar to the styles that are in the adjustment brush that we covered in the video I did uh, yesterday. You'll notice that lighten just lightens the image, dark and darkens the image. It just moves the exposure slider. Vibrance adds the more vibrance with the vibrance slider. Detail adds more structure. If we click on this drop down, you'll notice there's several more. There's that contrast, cooler, darker, detail we just have on now, HDR uh, look, then we have uh, Lighten, which we already demonstrated, Magic Eye Fixer. Now that's just a carryover from the adjustment brush. You most likely wouldn't be using a gradient to fix your model's eyes. So, uh, you know, that's just there from the adjustment brush. Recover highlights, reveal shadows. Again, toothbrush is from the adjustment brush. You wouldn't be whitening teeth with a gradient, most likely. Vibrance and warmer. 
Now for this image, I want to make the sky a little warmer. So I will use that warmer style, but I am going to come down here and adjust a little more. I'm going to add a little more vibrance and I want to add a little contrast and I want to add some structure as well. So that looks pretty good for the sky. Now I mentioned that I'd like to do the water too, but a different way. So I want to add a new gradient for that. And again, I could do the add up here, but that will not add a new layer. I want to add a new layer. So I'm going to click here and add a new adjustment layer. And you could see that the other overlay disappeared when I did that. But I have my bug back. So now I could apply the gradient down here on the water. Now when I click, it's adding the typical top bottom gradient, linear top. I don't want that. So I'm going to use this drop down and go to linear bottom. And when I do that, you can see it flipped it. So we're going to move it down and I'm going to have it affect the water and I'm going to have it very narrow transition zone. Now with this gradient, I want it to be cooler. So I could use the style and make it a bit cooler, but I also want it to be pretty vibrant and I probably maybe take structure down a little bit down here, make it a little more dreamy looking. And, um, you know, for the sake of this demonstration, I think that shows you what you could do with the second gradient. Now, if I want to switch back to the first gradient, simply click on that layer and you'll make this layer now active. And once that layer is active, now you could come in and adjust things for that layer if you wanted to. It's just demonstration. I could go back to my other layer and then adjust things for that layer if I wanted to. So that is how you add a gradient to your image. Now in the next video, I'm going to talk more about masking. Now you could see that the adjustable gradient had a mask with it. And we could do some manipulations to the mask to better apply the gradient to our image. I'm going to save that for another video and we're going to talk about masks and all the things you could do with masks both in the gradient tool and in the adjustment brush tool and we're going to actually do a luminosity mask in that video so look for that very soon. Thank you everyone that watches my videos. I truly do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.